Hey Reader Pops, welcome back. I'm gonna spin this random number generator wheel and it's gonna choose how many hours I read every single day for a week and I was spending this particular week in Malibu. So it was going to be especially cozy. Good morning. Good morning, guys. It's Monday. I've been into reading in the morning in my car after getting my coffee. So since I'm about to read, I need to spin the wheel first to see how many hours I need to read today. So here we go. Spin. Oh. Oh, two hours. That's not bad at all. We'll probably go over that for sure. Okay, sweet. Two hours. Good morning, part two. I properly showered, same crew neck, but it is Monday, like I said, the first day of this challenge, and I'm very excited because I'm in the middle of this book, How to End a Love Story by Yulin Kwong. This author is the person who turned people we meet on vacation into a screenplay, which means something they can use as a script for a movie, and she's the director of The Beach Read by Emily Henry movie, which is crazy. Emily Henry is one of my favorite authors ever, so the fact that she's that closely affiliated with Emily Henry makes her of intrigue to me. And also, how can she have so many talents? A screenwriter, a director, and now an author? Oh, wow. Her author bio says she was once fired from a Hallmark movie for being too hip for Hallmark. That is quite the flex. But yeah, I've been reading this. The cover is so cute, and it's really interesting so far. I got 200 pages into it, and it's about this girl named Helen who in the book is an author, and her book gets chosen to be turned into a TV show. So she moves to LA so that she can sit in on the writer's room of the people who are gonna turn her book into a TV show script. And one of the writers on the team is Grant, who she knows from high school and was involved with the death of her sister. So obviously they don't talk. They're enemies, pretty much. I've never seen an enemies to lovers romance book with that serious of a enemies origin story. Like that's actually a reason to not like him. So lots of tension in this small writer's room between them two and what the implications would be if she, I don't know, fell in love with him. So there are themes of grief and the book kind of switches between being like a lighthearted rom-com to very serious and almost like normal people, which is more literary fiction. Sometimes her writing style will go from descriptive and poetic and flowery, and then it'll just cut to very dry and blunt, doesn't give us much detail, and then moves on to the next scene. Because sometimes when screenwriters write books, there's not much description of things because in their screenwriting, they just have to mostly write dialogue. And then like, she walked to the front of the room. Or I could be overanalyzing. Who knows? So I'm gonna keep reading. I have an hour, 44 minutes left to read for the day. I don't read many romance books where they're in a situationship, where like the lines are just kind of blurry. This is kind of new territory. Interesting. I guess that's why it reminds me of normal people because it's just not very common to read about. This is so weird. I don't know what just happened, but I went from really enjoying this book and then in a single page getting really icked out by it. Let's see if I can recover from this feeling, hopefully, because I have like 120 pages left. This book is bothering me. <sighs> it's almost so cute. It's almost so cute, but it's getting ruined. For example, they are not dating. For his birthday, he wants to invite over the entire board of writers that they work with every single day to his house for dinner, but he gets to have PDA, like public displays of affection with her as much as he wants. That's his wish for his birthday. To basically, I don't know, reveal that they, that's the issue, that they what? because they're not dating. But if they were dating, it'd be so cute. But it's icking me out because they're just so like doing nothing together, but ruining each other's emotions. I completed my two hours for Monday. I think I actually went over it and finished the book. And then it was Tuesday and I was in an Uber on the way to the airport, but I wanted to spin to see how many hours I would get. So I could read there and I got four hours, which I thought would be very easy with an entire flight ahead of me, but I was wrong. Hi 
Hi guys, I'm in Malibu now. I'm in Malibu now, I'm in Malibu now. I'm gonna be in this little Airbnb in Malibu with Brie for like the next week. And I'm so excited, this place feels fake. Like the ocean is right there and it's perfect for this video because we're just gonna be reading for hours on end every day. So as you saw this morning, it's Tuesday. I was taking an Uber to the airport when I spun the wheel and I got four hours for today, which is great because the flight was three and a half hours. So I ended up getting to read for two hours so far, which means I need to read two more. I ended up finishing How to End a Love Story yesterday and I didn't bring it with me to review it. So I will be giving a more extensive review at the end of this video, but I started The Villa by Rachel Hawkins. This is a thriller book and I thought it would look very like beachy and fun for this little vacation, but reading it on the plane so far, I got 124 pages in and the vibe is much more sinister and creepy than I thought it would be, which is not what I was expecting. I honestly was kind of expecting characters that you find funny because they're dumb running around on an island and that's not what this is, but it is funny because it's about this author who is gonna go on a trip with her friend whose name is Chess. Her actual name is Jessica, but she goes by Chess, like the game. But their friendship has been a little bit strained because Chess went on to get super famous as like this self-help woman and she gets interviewed by Oprah. But she wants to go to Italy with her friend because who is the main character of this? Emily. Emily just got a divorce. She has an overdue manuscript that she needs to make money from. And her famous friend Chess is like, I'll pay for this six weeks in a villa in Italy if you come with me. So they decide to do that. And this villa is where a murder took place in like the 1970s amongst this like rock group of friends who made music and it's a dual timeline of back in 1974 when that actually happened and then Emily and her friend Chess discovering the history of the villa that they're staying at. So way creepier than I thought it'd be. The writing is really good. I will say I'm not as interested in the past timeline because I feel more distant from it. When it is Emily and Chess, I feel connected to them. It feels like the present day. And I'm here alone right now, so kind of scary. We're gonna see if it gets scarier, hopefully not. But I have two more hours, so I should get to 250 pages by the end of this. And then the book's only like 280 something, so maybe I'll just finish it. Continue. You got someone new, I know it. Yeah. But I will keep on and I Low numbers. Yeah, let's hope what if it's seven hours? No. Oh god. Six. six. No. Today's not the day to get six. Wait. Hmm. I'm gonna need to lock myself in a cave. Well, how many did you do yesterday? Four. Four was hard, right? Was it hard? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's tough. All right, let's get started. What book is it? Abby Jimenez, Just for the Summer, new release book. Ooh. Okay, this is gonna be good though. Why? I could definitely read this book for six hours. Why? Because it's. I just love Abby Jimenez and the text is huge. Go fast, yeah, I go hard, wanna find some peace, so I pray to God to find a way to fix it all. I'm in denial. I'm is this a silent review? No. <laughs> Today, I rolled the dice. Oh wait, a Die could be good for this video too. Fun. As you saw, I was running around the town today. So this morning I rolled a six, which was concerning because I was not gonna, I didn't get back to the Airbnb until nighttime. But this morning I woke up early on accident and I read for an hour and a half and finished the villa. And my thoughts, I haven't thought about it since finishing it, which is not a good sign. It is a past and present timeline in this book. And the past timeline was really boring for the first half of the book. And I got really disappointed every time we were going backwards because the current timeline with the frenemies who clearly hate each other and the Italy villa was much more entertaining to read about and it could have been a really fun book if it was just about them I think I feel like she was trying to get very deep in this thriller and almost have themes as serious as a classic book would have and parallels between the two friends in the past timeline and the two friends in the present timeline which is cool but it's just a lot more effort and thinking that I wanted than a fun little beachy thriller book that I thought I would be getting I just read that classic book Rebecca and it kind of even gave those vibes like it was just so much more serious than I thought it would be and scary I stopped reading this book last night because I thought it was going to go down a very scary rabbit hole that I didn't want when I'm staying in an Airbnb. So I stopped reading it, read Matthew, the book of Matthew from the Bible last night for like maybe 30 minutes, completed my four hours for the day. Cast book, by the way. Plot's thickening. They might kill the guy in the book. It's crazy, <laughs> which would be really sad. I don't think he dies forever though. Um, <laughs> I mean, we'll see. 
Don't spoil the ending. Okay, well, I won't. I don't know. I think this is like a three and a half star. Her writing is good and talented, but she was going for way deeper than I wanted, and it's kind of too dark. It's so funny when I'm like, oh, this thriller was too dark, because like, what did you think was gonna happen when you read a thriller? But some thrillers are just fun. Maybe I need to read Cozy Mysteries again, because those are for sure not dark at all. That's probably what I, I need to be doing, so my bad, Rachel. Didn't mean to do that to you. You're a talented author. But today, I was so excited to start this book, and it's so good so far. So cute. There's a fluffy, scruffy, little dog from the pound, which is amazing. I happen to know a guy like that. And it's just so cute. Like I feel like Abby Jimenez writes books with men who are actually cute and endearing men who are respectful. And it's not just like raw, raw physical, which I'm so happy about. Cause I feel like I just haven't read a romance book like that in a while. So I'm a hundred pages into this and it's going splendidly. I've read for three hours and 22 minutes. It's 11 PM. I would have to stay up for two and a half hours, it's like 1.30 a.m. Well, let's get to reading. At least the book is enjoyable. Good morning. Good morning. I woke up and my stopwatch was gone, but I read for five hours yesterday, which means I failed. But today is Thursday, it's a new day. So I will be adding an hour to whatever I spin on the wheel today. So I guess we should spin it, hey? Let's spin it. seven hours. There's no way. Would it say seven? Yes, and I was gonna add an hour from yesterday. So you have eight hours today. There's no way. I mean, there is a way. Is there? It's almost 12. You could do it. So we're gonna try our best. Seven hours. That will like definitely get me through this book plus another one. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, well, you guys saw what happened and I'm not re-spinning, so. Oh, I put my bookmark in. Thank goodness, because I was sleepy. Fell asleep reading this book and I got to page 167. It's not that impressive, but I am enjoying the book. I'm actually very happy because the cover of this book is the vibe that you're getting inside of it. Like the hardest thing in it is a complicated mother relationship, but it's not like sad or anything. It's a sad situation, but you don't feel sad reading it. This one looked so fun for next to the beach. The cover was not the feeling that you get when you see this happy little cover. This one, however, is. So I'm very excited and happy about that. So I'm going to sit next to Brie on this here couch and start our eight hour journey today. It's honestly doable. We can take a break in the middle and then stay up late. Action. <gasps> run, run, run. <laughs> I'm happy to be back in this world. Aw, that's a good sign. Trader Joe's. Nothing like a grocery store that makes you have to visit another grocery store right after. That's funny. It's not true. It is true. I mean, I feel like people shop at Trader Joe's and they just buy frozen things, so then they think that way, but like, they actually have every base. Do they? They have flour, like everything you can eat. It's just not like pre. They have like turkey slices? They have sliced turkey, bacon, every produce, every protein, organic grass-fed beef. Guys, we've been, we just started oh, a debate. <laughs> I thought you were just reading that to me. Aww. Oh no. That was sweet. We had a debate. <laughs> Who you texted? Uh, my boyfriend. <gasps> I'm, in denial. I'm, I'm now on page 237. Let's see how long it's been. An hour and 36 minutes. Not bad. This book is doing what I like romance books to do, where they are bonding together in their lives, really getting to know each other. And the most that they've done so far in the book is like a forehead kiss and then one little smooch. And it's just cute. I, I love books like that. So it's going well. Just a smooch. I just got to page 300. Oh, and we we're just about to hit four hours. Guys, four hours for the day. Not bad. I haven't been updating you because Brie is in the kitchen filming a video and her boyfriend <laughs> so unreal. and her baby has been also using this as a co-working space. So I have been <laughs> reading my book like a diligent reader that I'm supposed to be and I'm, surely the book is over. Mm, okay, well not okay. I have a hundred pages left actually. That's pretty crazy Which is fun though because I don't really want this book to end because if this ends I have to choose a different book to read and this thought of that sounds not fun right now Because I'm liking the world that we're in and it's still so sweetie and cutie <laughs> I really haven't explained much more. Maybe I will at the end four hours down four more to go Let's go Just be cute for a while I missed the boat. Yeah, I know it 
all along with mixed emotions just about to hit seven hours and i just finished this book which feels like way too long i feel like i used to be able to finish a book like this in like i guess seven hours total but i read a little bit of this yesterday maybe i'm a slower reader as time goes on who knows this book was shockingly good it's kind of a weird juxtaposition of a way deeper romance book than i was expecting but also it's so simply written that it still gives typical rom-com vibes even though it's not a comedy both emma and justin have very complicated family situations right now mostly to do with their moms her mom growing up would just leave the house and abandon her randomly to fend for herself so she got put into the foster system when she was like 13 years old and grew up with her best friend and then his mom is going to prison and he has a ton of young siblings so he has to take care of his really young siblings and emma our main character has a very flighty attachment style where she is not used to settling in one place because she's a travel nurse and about every six weeks she and her best friend maddie will pick up and go to a completely different state like hawaii really any where they want but she wants to give dating this guy on reddit a try because they both have this curse but once she actually starts falling for him she's never experienced that and she is so freaked out by the idea of settling in one place so she has to face all of her childhood traumas but i feel like all of the conflicts were really realistic i mean the plot line with her mom is not so realistic with i don't know that that part felt like a book but it felt realistic in the way that it wasn't annoying what the characters were doing and i just thought the resolutions were all really nice and i think if you love acts of service this book is definitely for you it's also a really slow burn romance and there's not really much spice at all like there's maybe a page where it kind of talks about it but it moves on really fast which is also really shocking to me so i feel like this romance book is something that it's like almost pretty much everything i look for in a romance book i think the reason it's not like a five star for me is because i like really i don't know how to describe it i wouldn't say it's flowery writing this book is very simply written i feel like if english isn't your first language you could even read this book and all the sentences are just very kind of straightforward and plain if that makes sense and i kind of like a more perhaps lyrical metaphorical type of writing style i don't know if emily henry falls under that category but she's kind of what i'm picturing in my head so i think that's the reason that i don't feel like it's a five star book because i don't feel like it has that type of writing style that really makes me have this yearning feeling but i loved every part of this book and i feel like it had a bunch of elements that i wish most romance books had so this is like a very high four star maybe 4.25 i feel like 4.25 stars feels correct for this one and i'm so happy because it's such a pretty cover so i'm so happy that finally a pretty cover book because a great inside as well but now i still have an hour to read it's actually hilarious that i finished this book in almost exactly seven hours and that's what i technically did spend today but i missed an hour from yesterday so i'm gonna read for that hour now and i don't know what i'm gonna read i only brought one more book with me on this trip but i'm not really in the mood to read it right now so i think i'm going to scroll on tiktok or something and figure out what i want to read on my kindle backlit backlit <laughs> oh my guys you fell down guys where'd you go <laughs> guys you fell down guys stop it's friday bruh guys it's windy it's day five of our challenge we have read three books so far this is the stack that i brought on this trip and we have read these two they're so pretty and beachy and this is the last one that i have and i did bring my kindle but the attachment that i brought to charge it's not working for some reason so this is my one and only option who's ready to spin the wheel oh i forgot to say the hour that i was supposed to do yesterday to add to the time i read my bible for 15 minutes and then fell asleep so technically i would have to add 45 minutes to today but we'll see all right i'm spinning i'm spinning i'm spinning uh, oh it's gonna be four hours holy crap four hours and 45 minutes maybe i'll finish this whole book it's so itsy bitsy it's like 200 pages this is the blonde identity by ali carter ali hazelwood has quite the blur she wants this to be a movie it's some sort of girl wakes up with amnesia doesn't remember where she is and then she's a spy with another man i don't know i'll read it and then let you know oh rachel hawkins has a blurb on the back rachel we just read you interesting all right let's dive into today's four hours and 45 minutes <laughs> Saturday spin one hour. Let's get one hour because I only read for one hour yesterday. <gasps> I got four hours again. Oh my god! And I didn't read three of my hours yesterday, so guys, I'm gonna read a little bit today and we will film that. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Okay, I'm back home now. As you can see, things were getting a little silly at the end of this video. I was starting to realize that I don't read as many hours a day as I think I do, because I thought this would be pretty much like my normal life, but it was way more reading than I typically do in a week. As we can tell, because I almost read four books in six days, which is insane. I actually have not finished The Blonde Identity yet, because by the time I flew home and saw Ryan, I was like, ee, yay, Ryan, and I just got distracted, and this video became a figment of my imagination. So I've just been reading this book every night before bed. I'm 164 pages into it. At first, I thought about DNFing it because I was like, I don't think this has enough backstory for me to really get invested in the characters. But then every night before bed, I would get really excited to actually revisit these characters. They somehow started growing on me, even though it's about this girl who wakes up, doesn't know who she is, where she is, why she's being chased by men. And so she starts being protected by this guy who is also running away from the spies. We don't even know who they're running away from. And that's the thing with this book is that there's just not that much backstory, which just makes it feel very fictionally. And it's also a little bit insta-lovey because they are complete strangers. She doesn't even know who she is, but he's this spy guy. He's not used to ever loving someone because he's not allowed to. His entire job just makes him use people and never trust anyone. And so you see his hard outer shell kind of crack. And yeah, it's cute so far. Obviously I'm not done, so I don't know what it'll be like. I'm guessing this will be like a three star book, three and a half stars. It's just really fun and lighthearted and funny. But I told you I would review this book at the beginning of this video. So here's my quick review of this. I did a lot of highlighting in this book because I actually thought that a lot of her quotes were amazing. My issue is though, I did not find their situationship to be romantic or interesting at all. If anything, it just icked me out really bad. So even when they said really cute romantic quotes that made me want to underline, it was about a relationship that was not romantic to me. So I didn't, it just felt out of place. If she would have just tweaked this to be them trying to figure out if they should be in a relationship or not, rather than the weird physical relationship they were having, trying to pretend like it wasn't anything more than that. I probably would have loved this book and I think I will read whatever she publishes next because I think her writing is great. And once I started reading it, I wanted to finish it, which is a great sign. It had everything almost there. It just was the actual choices that the characters made in this book that made it infuriating. So I'm gonna give it three and a half stars. Talented author, but I will never try to pick up a book that has a situationship in it ever again. So here are all the books we read. If you do this at home, you will probably read 4x what you typically read because I do not read this many books in six days typically. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I will see you somewhere else on the internet. Bye!